Sao Peter Caveos and Sochi. Well, those games have become the most expensive in history with a price tag of 51 billion US dollars, 7 billion more than China spent on its 2008 Summer Games. But where was that money spent and will the Olympics help the community after the Games are over? Natalie Carney has this report from Sochi. Valentina Velikaya has been living in the small village of Akshdaya her whole life and was excited the games would be built just nearby until the reality set in. We thought that finally our men would get to work there, but they didn't hire any locals at all. If you're registered locally, you're out. It doesn't matter if you're an engineer or whoever. All the new construction has also killed their crops and promises from the Sochi Municipal Council have not yet been met. They promised to get us connected to the gas line, but the Olympics are already here and we still don't have gas or water. However, voices such as Valentina's have been muted by the extravagant economic costs Russia has put into these games. President Vladimir Putin announced a budget of 12 billion U.S. dollars when Sochi was awarded as Olympic host city back in 2007. Today, that number has increased fourfold. A new state-of-the-art highway and railway was built to connect the coastal and mountain Olympic venues for a cost of 8.7 billion U.S. dollars, more than the total cost of the last Winter Olympics in Vancouver. Many other projects went well over budget, with unconfirmed reports saying as much as 30 billion U.S. dollars went to kickbacks and embezzlement, something the Russian Olympic Committee denies. Yet Sochi organizers expect over 200,000 spectators at the two weeks of games. This is going to deliver a certain growth impulse uh, through consumption. We estimate that uh, you know, it could be uh, several decimal uh, points of GDP. Uh, so something that, uh, you know, could be uh, especially handy for Russia uh, in an environment of uh, relatively low growth rates that we now see. Russia's economy grew by only 1.3%.